Come in. Oh, hello, Joseph, is it? Hi, Dr. Zapata. Yes, Joseph, Joe. How are you? I'm well. What seems to be the problem, Joe? Well, I'm having trouble, uh, difficulty drawing from imagination. Oh, Joseph, just so you know, that's totally normal. Why don't you tell me a little more about your problem? Is it that you can only draw from imagination if you're completely alone? Doc, I can't ever draw from imagination. What about if you're completely relaxed? When I'm totally relaxed, I can't imagine a thing. I see. Uh, Joseph, it's important to know that even with severe cases like this, there's always hope. I can prescribe an experimental therapy called Form from Imagination. Form from Imagination? Mm -hmm. It's early days, but clinical trials are extremely promising. Why don't you try this for six months and then check back in with me? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll do whatever it takes. Did you just draw this? Oh yeah. Wow, that's, that's amazing. I, hey, do, doc, do you ever have trouble drawing from imagination? Oh no, no. <laughs> you wouldn't. I mean, you should do this. That's right. Wow. Form from Imagination is an experimental therapy and is not yet approved for use by the FDA. Do not use Form from Imagination if you are already taking any prescriptions for drawing from reference, working sight size, or tracing photos you didn't even take. Stop taking Form from Imagination if you experience any of these side effects. Loss of interest in your personal projects. Megalomaniacal self-confidence. Hallucinations, unless they're the kind you're hoping for drawing better than Steven Zafata, or feelings that purchasing the course was enough and you don't really need to do the exercises. Call your doctor if you have stiff gestures, flat forms, or boring ideas to address a possible life-threatening condition. Full sketchbooks have been reported with form from imagination and medicines like it. Other risks include long-term art careers, too many clients, and being worth more than you're charging for. Call your doctor today and ask about form from imagination. The year is 87039 new non-linear time. It's been 50,000 years since Stephen Zapata's final art stream, but we still live in a golden age defined by the gifts his stream bestowed upon mankind. Faster than light travel, eternal life, Stephen cloning, and the keys to a truly galactic human civilization. My name is Stave Satipaz, a reminder clone of Stephen Zapata an exact reproduction of his personality as constructed by an AI compiling millions of hours of his original art streams. By all accounts, I'm exactly like the original Steven's public persona, just more muscular, exactly as he would have wanted. I travel the stars on my light tracer, a dream of Steven. My crew is, of course, all clones of Steven. Some of my officers are reminders like me, but not all. Some are bio-clones, and yet others are aspectoids, clones who, instead of trying to capture his full essence, amplify a particular portion of the original Steven's personality. We've spent hundreds of years drawing, exploring, and philosophizing while snaking our way through the stars, spreading the good word of design. But we've had another secret mission as we've cruised the cosmos. We, I, seek information on the legendary originals Stephen Zapata's true drawings that he flung wide across the stars at the end of his life on Earth, never to be seen again. My crew thinks I'm looking for them for the same reason all the other madmen do, because they would be valuable beyond all reason. But they don't know what I know, that a critical mass of originals in the hands of a trained reminder can provide a psychic link to the original Stephen mind. Once I collect enough, I'll be able to fulfill my destiny and achieve psychological continuity with the original Stephen. And through me, he will live again to usher in golden ages of art forever. Drawing Ascendant, the Eternal Chronicles of Stephen Zapata. Lasting Legacy One, Epic One.
All right, I'm alive. I am talking. I can't guarantee I won't have to do that again later. But for now, I am alive. Hello, Ayub Sadia, Liquid Lombat, VBR, Audio Gus, Woe Garden, Mac Wing, uh, Milliwigs, Ivan Falls, 3616, Leo Garcia, Marta Diaz, Disc Breaker, Lo Fi Sketches, Woe Garden, Vasile. VBR, Chromic Skills, Leo Garcia. I think I already got Leo Garcia. Saman Kucher. Kapo Nautas. Kapo Nautas. Nautas. Kapo Nautas. Sandwich, a liquid wombat. Cynthia White. Slothy. Mitt. Scent sign. Hell. Damiano Sherry. John D. Harvey. Eleonore. Opress Midi. Neutral Darkness. Donnie Bereznak. Care Blair. Marcy Darcy. Ranar. Cad. Defines Man. Joshua Joaquini. DSFF and Mihail Simeonov. And Motion Nakbe. Hey, everybody. It's my official greetings tour. We're drawing Goblin Lineup, because I feel like it. And we're listening to period appropriate fantasy music while we do so. How's my audio? Am I loud enough? Is the music quiet enough? Or is the music overpowering me? I'm gonna tune it down just a bit. I barely hear it. It's just the softest of ambiance for me on my end. Cracking my knuckles. Happy Friday, everybody. Get to draw and get your drawing in. My eyes are blurry today, Jesus. Good morning, Joseph. Sweet, sweet Joseph Marzelliano. If you're into character design, if you want to get better at character design, I say it all the time, but it really is true. Uh, designing your characters in a lineup is the number one best practice that makes you better at character design. Really, it goes for any kind of design. Um, people really overlook designing in lineup and designing in context. Even if you're just doing random stuff, working within a set, even if you have no other criteria, you don't have a narrative or anything that you're specifically trying to stick to, will automatically make you flex your design brain and make you stretch and push and develop archetypes and try to design clean silhouettes and things like that. It'll happen automatically. It's the number one most overlooked secret practice technique.
Do you use references when designing? Uh, when I'm doing something very specific, yes. Like right now I'm not, but that's not because it's a good idea. It's because I'm just trying to relax and I've drawn stuff like this about 6,338,526,232 times. So I can do it without reference. But if I was on the job or something like that, I would uh, definitely be using reference, absolutely. You know, most, most design problems that are worth tackling, and certainly uh, if you're being paid to tackle a design problem, like by definition, it's probably something that has a complicated answer that cannot be arrived at easily or else probably somebody wouldn't be paying you to do it. So um, almost by definition, it's like some amount of reference use is going to be appropriate. But right now, I'm not. I, I enjoy, for the sake of exercise and practice, um, inventing from scratch. And it also just lets me focus very deeply on the drawings instead of constantly getting distracted by the reference. Or we need another little guy. Mm. 
The stream name sounds kind of like a manga title. It'd be a very long manga title. Phone on Do Not Disturb here. And 
It's got a bit of variety. It's got a bit of variety to it. All right, let's poke around a bit. I'll add more silhouettes once the urge to sketch returns. But right now I want to do a little bit of a modeling and stuff like that. Let's see how I want to do this. Uh, you know, if I get into cleaning up line drawings, it's like I'll wind up spending the whole stream just cleaning up one, because ain't that how it goes? Theodora says, Oh, dear Stephen, I do see your life has taken a rather peculiar road. Yes, I see goblins. Mmm, yes. Smokes pipe keeps watching. Yep. It's gone weird. You know, who would have thought that I would wind up in a goblin family? I guess I, well, to be appropriate. Keep it in line. Modern day James says Deirdre is going to be sad. I mean, she'll always be able to come visit me with my goblin family. Why can't I name this seven? Okay. There we go. Now I'm part of the Goblin family. Now I'm fully integrated into Goblin society. Wait, I have an extra layer in here. My crew look like we're all very happy together. Yes, very happy. Yes, yes. <laughs> 
Wait, am I facing the wrong way? <laughs> Alright, let's poke at some of these. James is also going to stream at the same time now, that's what's up. People have a, an abundance of streams to choose from. I'm going to try to not do typical green or blue colors that I usually do for goblins and orcs. The music is so goo goo gaga boo boo baby stuff. Let me listen. Oh yeah, you're right. The music's so low that I can completely tune it out. Forget that. I always have difficulty playing music on stream because uh, I don't really listen to music these days while I draw. try try to do warmer palettes on these guys cuz uh, I always go cool Can listening to music other than classical be dis distracting or overstimulating for you? Even classical, uh, I find bothersome usually. It's it's not so much the music. I just um, I don't know. These days, I just don't like having that. I don't know the. I'm I I find no music satisfactory. So if I have it playing while I draw, I waste so much time changing it and reacting to it and um, looking for something else to listen to. So I can really only listen to music when I draw if I only listen to one song on repeat over and over and over again for hours. That's the only way it can work. But um, I generally don't even try to do that. I listen to audiobooks mostly while I work. People talking feels like company, you know, or it's just interesting to take in new information. But um, 
Yeah, I rarely use music these days. Do you listen to classical at all? Not really, unless you count like Ariana Grande, Cardi B, Beyonce. If you count them as classics, then yeah. Hey Steve, it just hit me that most people in this stream listen to you as they work. Yeah, that's the irony. That is the irony. If only I could stand to listen to myself, I would just listen to these streams back while I do my own work. idea to save a copy of the lines just in case.
I was really hoping the new Proco AI video would come out today, but it looks like they just posted something else. I doubt they would post two in a day. Say la vie. Maybe that means they'll post it on Monday or something like that. Theodore says, gotta get off the bus soon. Need to get that notification button working. Yeah, what's up with those buttons? Those terrible, terrible notification buttons. Would love to paint a bit longer at the studio while listening to goblin music and click click sounds. That's what we've got in spades around here. Goblin music and click click sounds. Bye, Theodora. See you soon. That video was was depressing. I'm still recovering. Yeah, well, that's why I wanted the. Um, I was really hoping the the next one would come out today, because I think it would be less depressing. Who knows? Maybe Proko will still post it today. Leo Garcia says, what about DeviantArt and their new program? If you want an update on my DeviantArt stuff, so in the in the next video, in the AI video that Proko's gonna put out with me, I cover that. We actually recorded it the day that it uh that it came out, the day that DeviantArt announced Dream Up. So my take there is a little bit outdated because it was before they had given into the backlash and made their protections um, opted out to begin with, but Besides that, uh, the rest of what I said there in my analysis is all still my um, my viewpoint, and I believe is all still true. So you'll you'll be able to catch my 
my opinion on that there. But if you want to hear it now, um, my interview with Chet Czar on the Dark Art Society podcast, which uh, you can find a link to it if you go to the community page on this channel. I go into it in detail there. But um, to sum it up right now, it's uh, no good, it's toothless, and they can't do anything. So there you go. It's also deeply, deeply hypocritical that they would pretend that they are doing something to help artists um, while simultaneously uh, adopting stable diffusion, which is already trained on ill-gotten data and uh, charging for generation credits. It's like, oh yeah, no, yeah, you told everything. So thank you so much for helping us DeviantArt. Wow, it's, uh, I don't know how to put it. It's uh, hypocrisy, plain and simple. It's absurd. Listening to that Twitter space with DeviantArt and RJ Palmer was a trip. Yeah, I mean, it was just clear that um, they had only spoken to venture capital people who just brainwashed them to being like, we need to do this to survive the, the machine learning gold rush. It's like they, they clearly didn't ask anyone in their actual audience what they thought about this or what they should do. It was just... It reeked of desperation, it was totally tone deaf, it was, it's silly across the board, and, and I don't know, DeviantArt deserves all of the bad faith that they're getting as far as I'm concerned. It just really displayed that they don't... They don't care about their users. They're just trying to. They're just a company. If they really wanted to help, they... Uh, should have helped litigate against companies like Stability AI and all of that instead of pretending that their fake little protocols can do anything. Sorry, that track must just be extra loud for some reason.
Is the stream muted? God, no. Get some random noise on this dirty shirt. Good morning to Iron Penguin. Music is louder than you, bro. I'm done with this. No music. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. This is why I've never been able to consistently play music on stream. It's completely untenable and intractable. It's gone. It's gone. Can I drop some good composer names here for background drawing? You can recommend it to other people in the stream, sure. I'm not gonna play it on stream, of course, because uh, I can only play licensed music here. Music that I have the rights to play, so.
Magda says, I wonder if you watch the Cuphead show and if you could sing the opening for us. Because I bet you would make it sound... Oh, wait, can you draw a cup? Oh, no, not that. <laughs> um, I have not seen Cuphead. When you say the Cuphead show, do you mean that they made a show from the video game? Did they make a show based on the video game? I'm sorry, but I do not know the theme song. Great White Sufi says, Stephen's a pot art. I'm having a little trouble selling myself to people who might want to pay me for drawing. Have you ever had problems like that or were you just too good? Um, that is that is the problem in art. But um, I'm going to need more info. Are you tr Who are you trying to sell to? Like, in what context? Are you trying to sell original drawings? Are you trying to get a commercial job where you sort of have like a full-time position at a studio or something like that? How exactly are you trying to sell yourself? just freelance for now. Um, yeah, you need... Um, it's got to be more specific. You know, you've got to be... If you want a job, um, especially for freelance, right? Because in freelance, you're generally not being hired for general ability. You're being hired for specific outputs. You've got to be very, very targeted in what you put out there. You know, if you just show the world, hey, I'm great at drawing, there's really not that many opportunities out there at any given time where someone needs to hire someone who's great at drawing just in abstractum. Um, you've got to instead show that, oh, I'm very good at drawing this particular subject matter, which is appropriate to this particular fandom, or I work in this particular style that's very popular right now. Like you've got to, you've got to prepackage it in a sense.
Always go for a particular niche early on. As you get better and better, you'll have to do that less and less, but in the beginning. Um, you basically want to use the old like salesman techniques. Like You've got to make it so that they don't have to do any thinking. Um, it's got to be clear right out the gate what the use of your art is. You know, So it's got to be for a particular audience within a particular niche and probably even brand the product. Like hire me to make a gift of your D and D of your friend's D and D character for them um, for Christmas or something like that. Like get that specific with what kind of product you're putting out there. Because most people are just never going to look at the excellent work of an artist and extrapolate and be like, huh, I think I have an idea for what I could hire them for, you know? Ah, oh, if they could do that, I bet I could, they could do this. It's like very few people are going to do that. Even art directors. Not even a lot of art directors will do that. Art directors have so many options that they're, the, they don't really need to sit around extrapolating. They look for people who already have exactly what they need in their portfolio. We were always taught to make illustration that sells a product, tells a story, or spells out a concept. Mm -hmm. That's funny. Sells, tells, or spells. I like that. Just don't do anything that you're not actually interested in. Like, you don't want to pander because uh, you'll get bored of what you're doing real quick and then you'll wish you'd never done it. You always want to avoid that. So you may have to align things carefully and you may have to, yeah, be a little shrewd business-wise, but you do not want to, um, you don't want to do anything that you don't actually care about. You don't want to do anything just for the business side. You can do it for a little bit, but it'll never be sustainable, you know? Let me see what Great Woods Suit is saying. I feel like the simplest answer is to just keep practicing and getting better. But if you've got anything more than that, I'm all ears. Well, well, let me read what else you're saying here. Okay, okay. Action comics and things like that. Action shots, manga comics, fight scenes. Yeah, I mean... If you're... If you're going to try to angle specifically into things like fight scenes, action shots, manga comics, well, first off, there's there's very little freelance available for making comics unless you've already made a comic. Like, from my experience and from people that I've met, if you just have a portfolio that's just drawings, even if they're excellent drawings, no one's going to reach out to you and be like, hey, can you make a comic for us? Or can we hire you on spec or with, a, with, a, with an advance to make a, a comic? Um, that happens very, very rarely. You need to have a comic and then people will trust that you can make a comic. So I would advise if you don't have that, focus on that. Have the actual product that you're trying to get hired for or that you're trying to sell. So you need to make a comic. Um, fight scenes is too broad-based, right? Like just being good at fight scenes is very hard to get work with unless you have packaged it as a particular kind of fight scene. Like let's say um, splash art for something like League of Legends. Like if you have that wrapping on it, then you can show that to Riot and try to get that job. But fight scenes on their own in abstract, they're too broad. It's going to be hard to get a job with that. 
Um, you could also package it as uh, storyboards. Like storyboards are full, have a lot of need for things like fight scenes and action shots and things like that. So you can wrap your drawings in a sort of storyboard framing. You know, you don't want, you know, there's a bit of technicals to know about storyboarding. You need to learn about lenses and pans and things like that, and you'll need to integrate that. But you could transition that kind of knowledge into a storyboard portfolio pretty quickly. The Liquid Wombat says, do you have any tips on how to arrange dramatic perspective for combat scenes? Perspective always gets wonky when I try it. Um, it's always going to come down to the specifics of the environment that that fight, fight or action scene is going on in. There's not going to be any kind of canned answer there, but generally wide angles, you know, wide angle lenses are what you want to use. So to just quickly demonstrate... So if you're on a long lens, you get gentle perspective diminishment like this, and a cube will look sort of very regular inside of this perspective system. You know, it has perspective, but it's nothing extreme, right? And so that's a long lens, and if you do a wide angle lens, you're going to get much more severe perspective throughout the scene that'll make a cube look much more much more pushed within this perspective environment and that tends to look a little bit more dynamic i'll stretch it out even more so you generally want to go with this one not this one for action shots, at least in drawings, right? Because it, well, if you look at films, films have made dynamic things look incredibly dynamic with these as well, right? But in drawing, it's a convention to use a more exaggerated perspective when you do action shots. But it's, it's so dependent on the particular creative needs you want that there's really no rules there. There really isn't. Um, when, when you use this in a big scene, it's going to make certain things easier to draw. It's going to make certain things harder to draw, right? It gives you more wiggle room with anatomy. You can foreshorten more dramatically. You can block big parts of the body with like a fist that's coming forward or something like that. But um, it might drive you a bit crazy if you have architectural elements in the foreground because they're very hard to make look normal when they have these big distortions outside of the cone of vision, like this corner down here of the cube. Um, but these sorts of effects are less pronounced as you go into the background because the background is happening within a smaller slice. So it has like this part of this perspective grid that I squared off here. That whole area, if you zoomed in on it, might look like this. So within the background, often you get more acceptable perspective distortions. So background elements that are back there, like architectural elements, buildings, something like that they'll hold up a little bit better way back there. Um, so, you know, once you become familiar with those problems that the different lenses create, 
you can arrange your designs to avoid the problems and lean into the easy stuff. So you'd put your figures closer to the foreground, you'd put your architectural elements more into the background. And if you do have architectural elements in the foreground, you try to either cheat them so that they're not exactly following the insane perspective that's going on down here at the bottom of the frame, or you pick architectural elements that are perhaps a little bit more organic because this hard edge of the cube really shows how out of the cone of vision we are here. But if I had an organic architectural element, let's say like a curving staircase or something like that, that just doesn't read as weird because the eye doesn't map the curves uh, as rigidly to perspective as it does the rectilinear lines. We're really out in the weeds here. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's a uh, hardcore drawing stuff. When does the Stephen Proko vid drop? I was hoping it was gonna to be today. When I had heard it was gonna to be today, um, but I saw that they released another video, Introduction to Drawing Dynamic Creatures, just 40 minutes ago. Uh, and from just from what I've seen from Proko, they rarely release more than one video in a day. Uh, so I take that to mean that they maybe haven't finished editing it or something like that. So I don't think it's gonna to be today, folks. which is a shame. I was really hoping it would come out today. And uh, I want it out there quick because I think it'll be a, a good medicinal solve for uh, a lot of the things that came up in the previous AI conversation on Proco with Evan. I think I'm gonna let the contour of his head dominate instead of that strap. I'm just gonna tuck that strap behind the edge of his face.
Go draw, great white Sufi. Go draw. Rock Chen says, have you ever drawn any female goblins? No, never. Never! And I never will. Artifacts of Exile says, you didn't have to turn the music off because of me, Stevens, about the art. Also, what to do if I'm afraid of failing to draw what I want? Um, I didn't turn it off just because of you. I, I generally, the music doesn't last long on these streams. It always annoys me. Um, and what to do if you're afraid of failing to draw what you want? You simply must not be afraid. You know, there's no... There's no like quick little psychological trip trick to getting rid of that. You've just got to, it's a very Zen thing. It's like, you know, there's nothing to fear. You know, it's just a piece of paper. You know, you don't have to show anyone your failures if you don't want to. You know, deep down that your failures don't mean anything about you as a person, that they're not a big deal. Um, it's the same advice that you would give a friend who was going through the same thing. It's never the problem. It's the difficult part is never imagining what is actually going on here or what is psychologically helpful and normative. The difficult part is always just choosing to live by what we believe and by what we understand. So stop wasting time. Just accept that you do know that there's just nothing to be afraid of here. And that you will be happier in the end if you just create blissfully and without restriction and without worrying. And instead of backsliding into neurotic worry about those things, just choose. Just say, I'm done. It's okay. And just work. Easier said than done, I know. But on some deep level, there couldn't really be another answer, you know? You can try to trick yourself with like a life hack or something like that, but um, it's not really the life hack doing it, you know? If you feel like a life hack is what did it, it just means that that gave you some sort of backdoor into accepting it for yourself.
It's like only an artist understands what an artist needs to hear. Yep, that's why we've all got to stick together. Non-artists just don't understand. Artifacts of Exile says, are you using a 4K tablet? Yes. Oh, yes, sir. Ooh, ooh, that's a good, oh yes. Oh, that's it, that's the angle. Oh, oh yeah, it hurts all the way down to my spine when I bend like that. Oh, that's so good. Oh, I'm being crucified on the tree of ecstasy. Oh, that's nice. Oh. Marcellus Carver says, drinking coffee while watching Stephen paint this goblin is so relaxing. These streams are just so enjoyable. I'm very happy to have you here. I'm very glad you find them enjoyable. You know, we hang out, we draw. We relax, we draw. We feel good. We enjoy being creative.
And as we said earlier, it's artists who understand other artists. So occasionally we've all got to chat with each other, support each other. Because uh, there's not that many other people out there who will. I should update the thumbnail, huh? Let me make this guy our thumbnail. First, let me save in case I do something very bad. A little value boost for the small size. Might also give me a preview of what these guys would look like in their final form after adjustments. I don't like to paint like this though. I like to paint low contrast because it always leaves it open for uh, more interstitial values between modeling factors. And we'll just make this 1920 by 1080. Goodbye, Cynthia White. See you on the next video. Back, back in time. Cool, baby. On call says, Stephen, I'm currently using the Huion Canvas 16. Uh, though precision is fine, the ergonomics are e <laughs> effing disaster. What tablet would you prefer as an upgrade? I'm using the Canvas, uh, the 4K version, the 24 or whatever it is. Um, I think the ergonomics on all screen tablets are a disaster. I mean, you use them because you need to. Uh, I, I personally think ergonomically, nothing quite beats the iPad Pro. You know, if you really need a very ergonomic experience, I'd try that one out. It really makes a big difference that it's light and you can rotate it easily and you can take it to the couch and stuff like that. But yeah, screen tablets are just uh, no good for ergonomics. Even on a even on a robot arm, I've always found them very uh, very hard on the back, very hard on the wrist. Screenless tablets are much better for ergonomics because you just get to sit all the way back and look at the screen head on. It's a sacrifice that you make if you're going to do a lot of drawing. You know, a screen tablet is much better if your your gig or your particular kind of work involves a lot of digital drawing. But um, yeah, they're just not good ergonomics wise.
Ooh, yeah, I like that hot highlight on the receding plane of the nose. Ooh. That's nice. It reads just right when you pull back. Oh, yeah. Oh. That's it? Yep. Okay. Could go totally crazy with the render here. Gonna try not to. Gonna try to leave it kind of brushy brushy like this because, I mean, it already does its job when you pull back like that. That That's all the read you're gonna get if you're gonna look at the whole lineup, you know? Still want to indicate that he's got like sort of big pores and bad skin, but just need to do that with a few flex and stuff like that. Don't need to render the crap out of it. Fish flops with the 10 SGD. How much is a large cup of coffee usually? Um, a large around me is uh, probably around Deirdre, what? what's a, what's a large, I guess not a large, but what's like the medium, because I always get the small, what's a medium latte around here? Six bucks? Uh, yeah. Six-ish bucks? Yeah, it's, it's like six USD. So I think you got me covered. Thank you so much, Fish Flops. I'm going to turn that into not just a regular coffee, but a large coffee. Large coffee! Thank you so much. You're really providing for me and for my family. You're not providing. I'm not going to. I'm not buying my wife's coffee with that money. But you're, you're providing her another form of nutrition, which is seeing me caffeinated and happy, which is important for her as well. It's not going to go unappreciated. You know, she's going to pay due honor to Fish Flops as well. Fish Flops, I noticed that uh, in another venue, your, uh, your handle is Marine Moccasins, and that really made me laugh. <laughs> that really made me laugh when I saw that. The baristas tremble in terror. Oh no, it's four o'clock. Do you think he's gonna come in? No way, not after last time. I mean, God, did you see what the cops did to him? Yeah, but then once he slipped out of their grasp, they couldn't find him again. Some people say that he slipped into a sewer down on 45th Street. Still, he's not gonna wanna go through that again. There's no way that he'll... Oh shit, wait, I think... Shut up. Get down behind the... Is that him? Oh my god. Oh crap. Quick, hide behind the espresso machine. Yeah, dear, it was a new bit. Need work. Oh, stop it. Don't you dare tell me my bits need work. Don't you ever say that shit to me. Come on. 
Dude, what you don't understand is that there's, there's a deep lore that you're unaware of because you only work from home one day a week. And all I'm asking for is just, just to res that you respect that fact. That there's, there's things going on here that maybe you don't understand. All right? Cold shoulder from my wife on that one. Joe says hi, by the way. Hi, Joe. Deirdre says hi. How's the pup? She asks how the pup is. All right, let's finally get off this face. You know, it's all right to waste a lot of time on the face because, uh, I mean, in some sense, it's like if the face is there, it's like even like that, it'll work for some people. <laughs> like that, that's really all they need. They can fill in the rest. Clover's being a good boy. We let him go upstairs now, and he's laying down chilling with us while we work from home. Aw, oh, that's nice. Aw. Magda says, can we have espresso machine mechs driven by goblins? Oh, no, wait, you're not that kind of artist, dang. You know who would give you that right now is Ahmed. Get a hold of Ahmed. He's been drawing a lot of goblins. He's on a goblin kick right now, and he loves espresso machines, so he'd be happy to provide that, I'm sure. Do 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 do. Ba da da ba da da ba. Do 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 da 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 da. Gonna work on his raggedy ass clothes for a bit. His raggedy ass clothes. Where'd you get those clothes? From the raggedy ass store. Hi there, welcome to the raggedy ass store. We have all sorts of raggedy stuff. Uh, ironically, we do not have ass. You can't carry that. We got all sorts of other raggedy stuff, like hats, shirts. Handles. Hand dolls. Did you say hand dolls? And, and What's an and doll? Raggedy Ann. Oh, raggedy and dolls. 
I see what you're saying. I love drawing. Drawing is the best. It really is. I, it's amazing how important it is to me to just move my hand like this. It's like if I move my hand like this, I'm happy. And if I go too many days without moving my hand like this, I'm depressed. It's not going to go well. I should have just done this string on another layer. Because it looks ridiculously thick for a bowstring. And yet I'm not gonna fix my mistakes. No, no, I know I'm doing wrong. But I'm gonna keep doing it. Oh, not disciplined, not thoughtful. Bad little artist boy. I want to stay off the pure black for the dark accents for now because uh, it's inevitable that I would do a levels layer on these guys at the end. And uh, if there's pure black in there, it'll crunch down in a very ugly way. There's nothing wrong with pure black. Pure black is very useful for dark accents, but it's like since I know I'm going to adjust the values in that case, it's better to hold off for now since the adjustment will produce the pure blacks. I envy your relationship with art. These are so cool, man. Don't envy it. You can have a relationship with art too. Truly, a beautiful relationship is available there. Build one up for yourself. A relationship with your creativity. It is such an amazing thing. Drawing is my oldest and best friend. It has been with me through so much. It has also screwed me over so many times. Bit of a dick sometimes. Also very needy, very needy friend. Not the kind of friend you can just be casual friends with. Wants constant attention, high maintenance.
I sure hope you get to Bear Goblin. I want to get to all of these. He will be fun, though. A liquid wombat with four ninety nine in United States dollars in American currency. Incredible. Hopefully for a ticket to the light tracer to get off this rock. Look, you're going to need to pay way more than that to get on a light tracer. <laughs> I don't want to spoil too much about the incredible world-class world building in my world and genre defining expensive intellectual property known as Drawing Ascent at the Eternal Chronicles of Stephen Zapata, Lasting Legacy 1, Epic 1. But light, tra light tracers require quite a bit of resources. <laughs> quite a bit of resources to operate. And you guys probably have never heard of a world-building concept like this, but um, that resource, <laughs> difficult to obtain. And... Um, this might be a radical concept to you, but uh, I've actually thought about the economics of acquiring and distributing said resource. Yeah, yeah. It's a little thing I like to call world building, and I invented it. <laughs> yeah. I know you guys just do random stuff in your stories, but uh, I have maps. Family trees. <laughs> I've even, um, I don't want to give too much away, but uh, <laughs> I've invented some words. Needs to have darker hands, dirty, dirty hands. Is this from imagination? You bet. This is unironically how nerdy world builders act. Yeah. We've all met a few. We've all met a few. The smug world builder bit is chef's kiss. I knew you would like that, Joe. That's definitely your taste. Imagine if Tolkien was like this. Yeah, I mean, it is funny. It, it, it is funny how deeply uncool it is to talk about it. It's like just, you know, you got to make the thing. <laughs> it's really uncool if the thing isn't made um, and it becomes very okay if uh, you actually made your creative vision. It's like... Lord of the Rings would have sounded like just as bad an idea as any other idea that any average person had if you were just like hearing him say it while he showed you some uh, little maps that he drew in the margins of his notebooks.
Steven, the last episode of the A to Z podcast was so funny. Too bad it's the last episode. Yeah, it's a shame. Bye, Magda. I just remembered something. Excuse me while I check it. No, not you, Deal. Just talking to the chat. Okay. All good. Speaking of it, have you played Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor, Mordor, some cool designs of orcs and goblins? I played it briefly. I did play it briefly. Um, long time ago now. That game's kind of old, right? People still talk about it a lot, but how old is that game now? That came out a while ago, didn't it? I didn't go all the way with it. I bought it, I had it on Steam. Played the first couple missions and then I fell off. I don't remember why. Is this a self portrait of yourself as an elf? No. This is the self portrait of me as a member of the goblin family. Yo, I gotta get rid of uh, Fine Love on the new dating site. Ooh, the new dating site. Wow. How you doing over there, Didi? to strap someone's head to my butt. Get a good whiff, buddy.
the most overrated artist in your opinion? Definitely me. Absolutely. People are always saying that my draftsmanship is without equal, that I create the best characters, that I have a near inhuman understanding of lighting and values, that my rendering is completely unequaled in all of art history. People say that I'm funny, smart, clever, well-spoken, articulate, widely read, and it's like, it's a bit much, you know? I mean, there's some truth in all of those things, but yeah, I'd say me, you know? The, the things that people say about me are just a little bit too effusive and far-reaching, and um, if they could just trim it back a little bit, I think that'd be a little bit closer to the truth. That's good. She deserves it.
Steve's a real pit bull. What could that mean? Does that look like a pit bull? I don't think I have that kind of a blocky sort of earnestness to my face, but. I think I'm a rather slight man. I don't know what kind of dog I'd be. I think I've got some sort of mutt energy. Maybe I'd be like a terrier or something. Like a little one that eats rats. A little rat terrier. Looks like a little shark. I came out looking like a shark. I've seen art from Mid Journey that looked like a photoshopped and blotched up version of someone else's art. You don't say. Why are you guys being mean to AI art? I thought everybody here loved AI art. kissed a gob and he liked it. He kissed a gob and he liked it. The taste of his human dinner. He kissed a gob just to try it. Hope my high lord don't mind it. 
It felt so wrong, it felt so right Don't mean I'm a goblin tonight How many goblin children have you had, and do they look more human or goblin? Which genes are dominant? No kids yet, you know? You don't have to have kids to be a family. I think that that's um, a little bit restrictive, you know? Me and my goblin crew, you know, we're, we're a family of a different sort. What matters is that we, we love each other, we support each other, we feel safe with each other. That we can always depend on each other. That we sleep in a large pile on cold nights in order to retain warmth. Can we see the lineup from the <laughs> Goblin Works? Very appropriate. There's the lineup. We painted this guy up pretty fast. I mean, how long would it be? Two and a half hours on stream. We did the whole lineup on stream for the most part. I think I already had the sketch for the guy on the left. Rendered his face, painted up his body. Not to the same level as the face, of course, but it's not really what we're looking for.
Did you have to kill someone to show allegiance and get accepted? No, I, I mean, they just got one look at me and they were like, you're one of us. It was just a glance. They knew right away where I belong. Wanderative says, for me, I am a traditionalist and I don't like the art world's attitude that each artist should be different. If it's Baroque and if someone is a genius in Baroque, then that is ideal. I don't like the art style dying with the artist and it being only a single person thing. Uh, I should continue and pass down to develop. Yeah, well, a lot of our history was like that. I mean, people were consciously working to schools and to styles and things like that. Um, if that's what you prefer, do it. It's not gonna, it's not gonna change the fact that others are free to uh, individuate and to be as unique as they would like to be, but that's really the great thing about art. It's so vast and so grand that uh, there's room for both. You can be a traditionalist and work within a historical style or something else that you put together and try to pass that off and um, pass it on down the line. And at the same time, other people can just go for the wildest, most out there thing that they can imagine. And the existence of one does not critique the other, I would say. Have you seen Paul Bonner's Gabos? Oh yeah. 
Those are some legendary gobos. Wow, I wandered away for a while and this turned into something else entirely. Well, you know, things change fast around here. I mean that it's really fully rendered now? Well, you know. See, it's not, it is not fully rendered. You know, it's very, very rough and I did it all very quickly, but the right things in the right spots and it'll feel fully rendered. Just goes to show that, um, You know, something that you don't feel is finished. It's not really up to you, you know? The audience might think it's finished. Because I know what's possible and how far I could go on something, this is like definitely sketch level for something as complex as a character design. I know that a, a full render is on the other side of like 40 hours, 100 hours, so because I have that in mind and I know I could do that and I know like how I would set up for that. It, um, it just gives me a different set of expectations. Deirdre, I'm going to Cookie City for lunch. Mm, Chip City. Chip City, yeah. I'm just going to get a half dozen chocolate chip cookies and eat that for lunch.
All right, gonna jump over to the next guy in a minute here. Start laying him in. Mm, I want to go back. Eh, da, 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 da. I can come back and do a little rim lights and do his hair anytime. Let's make boyo number two. We'll make that green. Duplicate the lines so that we have them in case things go horribly wrong. Set that to multiplier. Got a for nurster percenter. And then let's think about the palette here. Like I said, I'd like to keep things warmer, but I did imagine doing him with a cooler flesh. Then maybe I can do the little armor plates as like very warm, kind of rusted steel. Let's see. Let's see what we can find, shall we? I think that was Fanny saying I'm done with you guys. We're gonna I'm gonna go in the other room. Now when there's something very important um, to the color arrangement, like the idea that I would rust parts of this sort of irony armor, um, you wanna get it in even in the lay-in, even if they're small shapes that would be appearing because you want to be able to assess if it's actually going to work out. It's like just because it's a texture or material indication, don't slot it into the do it later category because you, in general processes, we think, oh yeah, textures and materials later, just get the overall values. It's like, yeah, that's generally good advice, but when the success of the design hinges on that particular little nicety, uh, get it in there early. Give it a real look.
Hey Steven, any preparation for the design course already started? Scripts? Oh yeah. I spent months working on it last year. Yeah, it has quite a, quite a significant start in pre-production. Nothing production yet, haven't filmed anything or stuff like that, but uh, it has a significant pre-production beginning already. How did you get so good at digital? Oh man, just years and years of doing it. I've been using Photoshop since I was like 12, something like that. The drawing ability and stuff like that is, is sort of abstracted away from it being specifically digital. I mean, there's a lot to digital application, but um, my drawing skills are always improving, no matter if I'm working digital or traditional, and it shows in both realms. I gotta readjust this screen. My wrist is hurting. Some little bands to help sell the perspective a bit.
Steven, do you think there is anything of use in a paint like Steven Zapata tutorial for Gumroad? I'm not sure if it's really technique or just design, but I do appreciate the way you paint. That's very kind of you to say. Um, I think if I was being perfectly honest, like my um, like to paint like me is really just um, it's really my drawing knowledge. You know, I I experience my painting techniques as simply using my drawing techniques with color added. So um, obviously there's a lot there. You know, I have a lot to say about drawing. Um, you get the course. You get the course. For sure. Like besides design, all I'm thinking about when I'm rendering things and painting things is everything about the modeling factors, my form knowledge, and then I just add this thin veneer of color on top. I gotta take a restroom break in a minute here. Just let me get these pants in. They need to be very neutral, but I don't want them to compete with that warm knee pad there. for these two tones to be different. Let's use that same tone that's being used for the cross strap. Let's use that same one for this pelt. here. I don't want to confuse it with too many colors because I'll always wind up adding colors in the render. All right, I'll be right back. Just gonna go use the restroom. Hello everyone, my name is Steven Zapata. I'm a concept artist, illustrator, online art teacher, and former instructor at Art Center College of Design. I would like to introduce you to my new drawing course, Form from Imagination, a course designed to help you draw with confidence from your mind. Maybe you wanna be a professional illustrator or designer. Maybe you wanna be a master with a pencil. Or maybe you just wanna be the best artist that you can be. Beautiful goals, but it's not always clear how to improve the work that you do from imagination. Over the past six months, I've taken all of the little eurekas, tips, and essential exercises that gave me confidence drawing from my mind and compiled them into a sequential course. We start with the absolute foundations, covering the scientific nature of light and shadow, how to hatch, how to create flat tones, how to render spheres and cubes. And step by step, we move through combined shapes, complex shapes, organic shapes. We cover how to simplify extremely complex subjects like the head into basic shapes so that you can handle them more easily from your head. We look at how to understand and treat details. And by the end of these 14 chapters with over 50 video lessons, you'll be ready to do complex designs from your mind with fidelity and energy. And all the demos are done in pencil on paper, so you can do all of the assignments even if you don't have a fancy digital art setup. But I also have demos, instructions, and modifications to the assignments for those who do wanna do them digitally. Here's how it works. Go to formfromimagination.com and sign up for the course. Download the assignment book and start watching the lectures. Do the assignments at your own pace. Take your time with them and use this self-study to develop your patience. 
When you're done, post your assignments in the exclusive community hub, and I'll personally critique your work with drawovers, diagrams, and advice. I want you to know, this course is no joke just because it's online. It is challenging content, and it is more complete than it would be if I was teaching this class at an art college as I have before. If I was teaching this class in person at Art Center today, I would just play these videos in class, knowing full well that they're the most concise, focused, edited, step-by-step -step way to convey the material. So I'm serious when I say, this course isn't just a substitute for a college-level course, it's better than a college-level course. And you don't have to pay thousands of dollars per credit and wind up hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. So thank you for checking out the course, thank you for watching this and for your support, and thank you for drawing and making your artwork. The world needs it. I'll see you soon. Let us continue. Damn, I really wish that Procovid had come out today. Bummed. Since you are painting your D&D &D party, what's the background story of each character and what's the dynamic of the party? Uh, I don't think of it as a D&D &D group, even though I definitely acknowledge that it could be that. I'm going to make his nose pink because why not? If I was going to, I mean, obviously, Captain. Obviously, Captain. Jester. Uh, scientist, Explosives Master, and Group Doctor. The Muscle. Sorcerer. second muscle, but more rough around the edges, and the rogue. I guess really, I guess he'd be a ranger, sort of an all-arounder. Bonkiru says, oh, first time watching you live. Finally, I can actually draw along together with you in real time. Congratulations. You made it. Welcome. Welcome to the hallowed halls of drawing. Gonna look for a general value and color breakup for the face. Just because he's a little bit more animalistic. I want to get some some sort of animalistic pattern to the coloring. Maybe 
he has dark local colors around the eyes. Dark snoot. That goes pink for the very tip. Maybe the blue kind of shows up in the masses in between. Do you have an active lighting reference for these characters? I do not. I'm just winging it. <coughs> oh. You okay over there? <coughs> this guy across the way got a new coffee maker. He's treating it very delicately. Oh my god, leave him be. Let him enjoy his new coffee maker. His girlfriend's hugging him. What the fuck? Is she hugging him because he has the coffee maker? Well, he just rubbed down the coffee maker and now he's getting a hug for his He got a... Baby. He got a hug for cleaning it? Oh my god, she loves that shit, dude. She's like, wow, the way you wipe it down. He probably like made it shoot the steam out of the nozzle and like with the I towel he, he rubbed I it. I think he might have even gotten a new table to hold the coffee maker. <clears throat> They're still locked in an embrace. Well, we got to stop looking at them because this is hot. This is really hot. There's so much going on right now. They love their coffee maker. It's brought them closer together. Steven, they're still hugging. I've never seen two people more in love with their coffee machine. Are you fucking kidding me? They still haven't broken it off? Mm -hmm. When are they ever gonna get to making coffee? <coughs> I'll tell you when they separate. Yeah, keep an eye on them. Is he lingering so much? Right. Just turn it on and go, buddy. Take a hint. Well, he took the pot off the pad. I don't know what his plan is. Well, his, his plan is certainly not to focus on his girlfriend. Any tips on how to maintain the light direction consistently for a beginner painter? The, this may sound like a cop out, but I really mean it. It's all in the sphere. If you truly understand the sphere on a deep level, you'll be able to keep your lighting consistent. And that's, that's way harder than most people think. It's like to go from zero to sphere requires like two hours of discussing lighting concepts and form concepts. A sphere is deceptively, um, deceptively deep and it's harder than you think to render a good one. So learn the, the structure of the sphere. Um, and you should be learning the modeling factors when you're looking into the structure of the sphere.
there's 12-ish of them. If you've never covered those concepts before, if you've never researched them, you definitely want to start there. First time coming to the stream, welcome JJ9930. What is happening with the coffee maker? Look, guys, there's... Look, we live in New York City. You can't help but see into your neighbor's windows. I mean, there, there's, <laughs> there's nothing else about it. And I can help it. You can help it? I mean, if I wanted to. Yeah, that's true. You could stop. <laughs> But I mean, look, we have a special relationship with them because we're across the courtyard from each other. We all know we can see each other. You know, I'm pretty sure they work from home some part of the week because I see them all the time. They always see me here at, at my desk. You know, it's a shared experience. It's a shared experience. So our neighbor got a new coffee machine, and Deirdre was laughing because he bought a new table to put the coffee machine on it. And he's also, like, visited the hold, coffee machine hold a couple on. of times Here, already talk, today. Here, talk, just talk to them. Just no, no, no. Tell no. them, tell them what you're seeing. <laughs> he's just, he's staring at it. <laughs> I don't, he's putting undue attention um, to this coffee maker and I don't understand it. I mean, he's been there all morning just admiring it. <laughs> but, the, but the best part is that this seems to really, she's hugging him again. She's hugging him again. She really likes, really turn on his girlfriend. she really likes the way that he cleans the coffee maker, man. She really, really likes that. All right. I'm getting on. All right. You don't have to talk on this one, right? You're good. All right. She loves it, man. Focus on your phone call. <laughs> You're working right now. What if your boss watches my stream?
keep it consistent. Is it even a fancy coffee maker? Uh, it's a little hard to see the details here, but it's definitely some nice stainless steel, kind of a big thing. No, I'm not gonna go buy binoculars. I really dig this new model goblin. Look like cute hippo ears. Yeah, I love hippo ears. I also like the little ears that like boars have. Those are some of my favorites. They're so fun to draw.
What's the resolution of the whole canvas? Very high. I think over 15,000 pixels wide. Oh yeah, 22,000 pixels wide. You don't need to do that. I mean, my computer can handle it, but you could do the lineup um, at a pretty high resolution, which is pretty easy because it's just basic sketching and stuff like that. And then, um, huh, why does my Black Friday thing keep? Oh, it's because I keep changing the size of my color wheel. Um, yeah, you can do the lineup at a really big resolution with simple brushes, so it's not a big deal. And then you can take each individual design and render it in its own document and then paste them back in. I just like being able to look at all of them while I work because it makes me push them in different directions. Hi, pup. How you doing? Who's your coco? Who's your coco? How you doing, stinky? Who's your coco? Who's your coco? Yeah, yeah, you're a dog, yeah, it's true. I got to look at her nose as for reference there for a second. Need dog cam to see cute dog 24 seven. Oh, I don't want to bother her. She already walked away. You know, she loves me because I leave her alone most of the time. I bother her constantly, but I'm really not that good with her alone. If she comes over again, I'll grab her up. What a nice Friday we're having, huh? This is so fun. I know I say that all the time and you guys probably think I'm a simpleton, but... It's just being in the zone and jamming just never gets, never gets old.
when you respect an animal space, they respect you for it. Yeah, I mean, you know, my dog was a rescue. She had a lot of uh, anxiety problems and all that when we got her, so. It was definitely a long, slow process. He's so ugly. What resolution should I draw on if I want to do landscapes? There's no required resolution unless you're on a job or something like that. Um, it really depends what kind of tools you like to use and things like that. It's like I can use really huge brushes because uh, I really just like using the hard round for most things and the hard round brush is extremely fast. But um, if you like using a lot of custom brushes and things like that, those generally slow your computer down. So you'll want to work at smaller resolutions 
if you use those a lot. So you do whatever works for your workflow. As long as you're over like a few thousand pixels, anything will kind of work, you know? I would, um, since 4K is the standard these days, I wouldn't work smaller than like 38, 40 across. I think that's the length dimension on 4K footage. Or a 4K monitor.
Stephen, do you know the work of Izzy? Hold on a second. Let me reposition my microphone here real quick. Stephen, do you know the work of Stephen? Yeah, that's me. And I lost my pen. Where did I put my pen? Stephen, do you know the work of Izzy Madrano? His monstrosities are equally monstrous to yours, albeit with another sensibility. Sounds familiar. I'm sure I know his work. I never remember people's names, but I remember their work. Yeah, yeah, this stuff looks familiar. <laughs> yeah, I've seen his work before. Very good, very good. He's also an Art Center alumni. Very nice. Well, I'm not an alumni, but I was an attendee. Don't wanna don't wanna steal any valor from the actual Art Center alums. <laughs> What are those things around the color wheel? And those colored name lists among the layers? They're just some plugins. They're listed in the uh, in the video description. Yeah, Stephen, you haven't graduated, but you have taught there. So I think that counts how we approach to teach there, by the way. Um, yeah, I also feel like that counts. I, uh, don't worry, I don't, I don't feel like I'm not part of the Art Center family. Um, how did I get approached to teach there? 
Um, I had a couple people had uh, sort of like floated it at me, but it, it hadn't gone anywhere. You know, I, I was busy with work and I didn't really take the 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 lead. And then um, what pushed over the edge was that a really good friend of mine was having a, a baby and he asked me to substitute for him for almost half of a whole class. I think it was like six weeks um, because he just needed to, you know, have a baby. So um, uh, I agreed. I was like, yeah, man, I'll finish your class for you. And then by the end of the six weeks, it was like I was already in the system. You know, I, I, I had already met a bunch of students and um, knew sort of where they were going next. So then when they asked me to take another class afterwards, I was like, sure. No problem. It was just like, it was much easier to just agree to keep going once I had already sort of um, gone through the hiring, the hiring process and done the paperwork and all that to help my friend out. How many term semesters have you taught at Art Center? I think it was a couple years. I forget now because I took some, you know, I'd take a semester off, go back to teach a different semester. I'd have to go add it up. It was probably somewhere between a year and a half and two years. No, I don't like that there. Whoops, it's all in the same layer. Let's just leave it up there in the top right. I think that'll work out nicer for us. <laughs> Bebop and Rocksteady, that's funny. They're not, but I can see how the archetypes are there. That's good.
just want it to feel like there's little cast shadows coming off of these spikes from the secondary light, and then those will fuse into the main light. Steven, if I'm not good at drawing, but I know how to paint, is it a good idea to paint values, then add line art on top of it? Sure, try it. It's, it's really just about whatever gives you the easiest mental access to what the heck it is you're drawing. If values are the way you think, which is totally valid, um, just lean into that. I mean, when I do stuff like this, you can see these... I mean, this line drawing is like, and we haven't rendered this one, so we don't know how much I can save it, but that's a pretty crude line drawing, right? It's really just a schematic, and uh, I spend most of my time working on the values, just sort of rolling form with light and shadow. I want to reclaim a bit of the local values I had designed. I lost like the the dark snoot I had designed. How big were the classes you taught? I had a class of like 10 people and it was nerve wracking already. Uh, some of them were 10-ish. Um, most of them were 10. I had a couple that were significantly more than that, if I remember correctly. Like uh, some of the broader classes that like everyone had to go through like base production design I think when I taught production design I think that was coming up on 20 people but fortunately that one we had two teachers so we got to split the workload we co-taught it that was so fun with my good friend Fernando Olmedo, who is a great teacher. Just getting some of the dark fur patterns in that I wanted in there. Just slugging them back in, it's no big deal. Go right over the rendering, who cares? It's not like I spent that long on it. It don't matter. It's always worth it to beat up your rendering if uh, it gives you a cool design element. Always worth it, in my experience. Whiskers? Nah, it makes him look too much like a cat. Hey, Amber. What's up? Amber says, have you seen the new God of War game? Looks pretty nice. I'm playing it. I've only got a few hours in it, but I picked it up and I'm checking it out. I always play those really big games. I always want to just see how the technology is developing, like what's the new benchmark for how detailed people are going at in the world. I always check that stuff out. 
And I'm pretty willing to play a game for a long time if it just looks nice. Even if I don't particularly like the uh, gameplay, I'll still play a game all the way through if it promises new art all the way through. But um, if a game that I don't really like the gameplay hits a point in the game where it stops promising new art, like let's say, um, all right, all that's left is the final boss, but you got to backtrack through like all of the old areas and collect this final item to go face the boss, I'll stop. I'll quit immediately. As soon as it reveals to me that it's not going to give me new art, I'll stop. Unless the gameplay is actually good. But if it looks great and uh, it never has a moment like that, I'll play a game that I hate all the way through as long as it looks great just to see new art. You like the design of the God of War characters? Yeah, I think that they have a real nice uh, design sense over there for characters. It's good stuff. But I mean, you don't need me to tell you that. <laughs> Probably enough good things have been said about <laughs> the, uh, the God of War designs and the way it looks. Well, the team wouldn't think so. They'd be like, no, I think more good things could be said. Killer team over there, huh? What I really want is a PS5 so I could play some games at higher frame rates, but you just can't get them. <laughs> just can't get them. And I'm not, not ready to pay uh, uh, more than two times MSRP yet. I'm not quite there.
how the kid's doing, Steven. You know, fuzzy. Let me do these speculars, pretending there is fur here. So that they sort of imply some short hairs in these areas. I'm getting real hungry here, folks. We've been going for four hours. I plowed right through lunchtime. I just love painting so much. <laughs> Just love doing stuff like this so, so much. It's very hard to stop. Just a bit more. Let me just work on this face a bit more while I'm in the momentum for it. But I am gonna have to go soon and put some food in me. Keep an eye out for that uh, Proco video in case they put it out. I had really hoped they were gonna put it out today, but um, it looks like they might not. It was a very long conversation, so it's probably just that it's taken forever to edit. It's a good one though. micro adjustments. Subtle, subtle stuff. Always zooming out to check if it reads small. That's what I'm doing when I do stuff like that. Just trying to unify big light shapes so that they have some hope of communicating in the whole lineup.
All right, it's a start. Definitely a start. Oh my god, I need to go eat, but damn it. Drawing is... It's frustrating how fun it is. God. I have a body. I live in the world. I have other responsibilities. It would be really nice if drawing was less fun. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna end it there. I'm not gonna start like rendering the muscles or anything because I know that I'll be in big trouble if I start doing that. I wouldn't start putting shadow shapes like on the triceps and modeling the interactions between the bottom of the deltoid with the upper arm and the way that it transitions into the brachialis muscle and sort of pushes the bicep out and forward. I definitely wouldn't try to make it look like the tricep is twisting to imply its mass as it transitions past the elbow and its little tendon inserts deep on the form. I wouldn't do that because then I know I would get stuck. I definitely wouldn't start doing brachioradialis and extensor carpi radialis longus and extensor carpi radialis brevis and the whole extensor group. I wouldn't do those things because I know that I'm prone to get stuck working once I start mapping those things out and I'm trying to have a different kind of a life experience where I rest and eat food and nourish myself so my course of action here is pretty clear it's pretty clear what I'm supposed to be doing and what I'm not supposed to be doing Pretty clear. Pretty damn clear. Okay, for the love of God, you know, we'll do it. We'll do it next time. We'll, we'll do it next time. All right, there's our lineup from today. And there's the two guys that we poked at. Um, <laughs> that's nice that you're all very uh, concerned about me. That's good. Um, thank you for hanging out, everybody. Um, do remember that... 
if you're interested in Form from Imagination, it goes on sale on Monday. That's November 21st, and it'll be on sale for a week through to the 28th. That's our Black Friday sale. Uh, it'll be $100 off. Um, and I hope you all have a great weekend and all of your creative endeavors go very well. If you're doing any drawing, I hope your drawings just come out. Ooh, just flamdiferous, just so amazing. Um, and do keep your eyes out on Proco for the uh, next AI conversation with me. And um, I, I think you guys will want to watch it. It's a, It was a very good conversation and a lot of the Stan presented a lot of the um, points that he had heard from Evan in the video that he put out the other day, what AI developers want artists to know about AI. Um, and I thought it was a great conversation because I think he basically covered all of Evan's points and relayed them to, um, to us. And uh, yeah, we, get, we have a good discussion about that. I think you guys are going to like it a lot. So keep your eye out for that. I thought it was going to be out today. It, I don't think that's going to be the case because they already put out another video and Proco doesn't usually upload two things in a day. So, um, but it could be over the weekend, maybe Monday, but uh, keep your eye out for that. All right, everybody. Have a good one. I'm going to go eat some food. Thank you, Pedro Assisi. Goodbye, Laifu. Goodbye, Audio Ghost. Goodbye, Yuri G. Goodbye, Luckful7. Goodbye, Assam Beardrauti. Goodbye, Renola Dominguez. Goodbye, Daryl Grant. Goodbye, Monster Chen. Goodbye, Arctic Monkey. Hubs Junkyard. Goodbye to Zella Fay. Goodbye to Enko. Goodbye to Tree Watcher. Goodbye to Abran Atomos. Goodbye to Delib. Goodbye to Wanderer. Goodbye to Arctic Monkey. Thank you, David Dubois. Good to hear from you. Goodbye, David Dubois. Goodbye. Goodbye, John D. Harvey. Goodbye, Falls 36. One six. All right, everybody. Peace. Have a good weekend. I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.